you might notice things are a little different. That's because if you missed the last episode, we finished the Gabura mission. The Aleph mission. Unfortunately, I goofed. <laughs> Majorly. And I accidentally reverted back. But it was a good thing. It was a really, 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 really good thing. Because, uh, as I thought, day 36 is a memory repository day. So, what you may have noticed is that I have lost a few of my important agents, but I have also retained the vast majority of my major heavy hitters. I did it, and I did it well. I really wish I would have recorded that one. That was good. But I don't know how you beat <laughs> only having two uh, surviving agents and somehow just barely scraping by. So this was good. This was fine. The beautiful thing is, is the only ones I really lost were the ones up here. That's not saying I don't miss them. I miss them dearly, like Mary and them. Um, and what's the, their name? Katya. I do remember Katya. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of them. I'm sorry. yoon -hoo, we lost them, which means we also lost Melting Love's equipment. That's not great. But I... Mm, all in all, it's working out. We're doing okay. I'm making it. Barely. <laughs> barely making it. So today, with the idea that we're very close to probably me being forced to go back to day one, I'm going to do another Project Lore build. But before I do that, I actually have something I want to show you. The first is the brand new abnormality. Wait. No, 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 no. 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 I did not pick the tree. It looks different, though. There's no face. What is this thing? I, I don't know. Let's do some work with it. We'll do instinct. Good luck, Johnson. You got this. Will you learn anything, please, so I can figure out what this thing hates? Apparently, it's instinct. <laughs> wow. Johnson, please. If you don't mind, do a better job. What? Whoa. <laughs> Hold up. What's going on there? There's something crawling out of that thing. That's common. That's common? Let's try attachment, maybe? This feels like an attachment kind of thing. Insight? Oh, it's one of those. It's all common. That means this thing is a nightmare. Why do I keep picking the easy nightmares? You know, like Plague Doctor. Oh, wait, what happened to this thing? <laughs> Everyone was saying this is going to be a nightmare. Eventually, I'm there. I don't remember how many times we've worked with this thing. I know it's got to be darn close to the maximum because, uh... It has now become a biblically accurate angel. Or sort of, kind of. Whatever this thing is. So, let's play with it and see what happens. My guess? Probably only bad things. Go on, Asera. Have a good day. I want to see this thing pop. I want to see what happens. I was told that this thing is menacing and terrifying. It's too cute to be that menacing and terrifying, so... Let's figure it out. I'm gonna turn my volume up a little bit, just to see if I can hear anything creepy-crawly in particular. I don't particularly like all the smooching, but hey, that's just because, uh, what? That's just because I'm jealous, huh? He answered them. Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? What? Who? Oh, what? And I say unto- What? Tell us when shall these things be? Uh, overwhelmed, huh? Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down? Huh? What are these? Oh, it's releasing 12 different... Oh my god, is it converting 12 different of my agents into nightmarish creatures? All of them? <laughs> that one had 
it is, because they have the same hair. No, that one has Nicole's hair! <laughs> no, actually, it's not. Wait. If they all die before that happens, then what happens? He answered them. If not, I chosen you twelve. What? Hold! Whoa! 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 B pause! Do not trust. I can't pause. Attack! <laughs> Everyone, attack! Attacketh this thing. Do not trust time. Oh, I can't pause. What the absolute crap is? They're all olives. Uh, Red's out. Army's out. Uh, I guess a Sarah doesn't mind any of this. Is anyone still al Johnson's still alive down there. Haru's gone. Diva is suppressing something. Now, Diva, come in this room and suppress. Oh, no, never mind. You have definitely lost your mind. A uh, Sarah, can you suppress this thing? You would be the only one. Chloe, go. You can do this. I have faith in you. No, this is this is really bad. This is a nightmare. I I've never seen anything quite like this before. What does that do? Oh, that is massive pale damage. Do not trust time. I will guide you. What? What do I do? Uh, I don't think I do anything. I don't know how I could handle this. Oh, actually, I do! A uh, Sarah! Run! Okay, I know what I must do, and I know how I must accomplish this. Fire! Fire the rabbits! Go! A uh, Sarah, you will be fine. A uh, Sarah cannot take damage. So as long as I have the rabbits, and I slow everything down, I think I'll be okay. Can I slow that? Can I slow this? Can I have them... Wow, they do so much damage. Oh, that's because they're mine and they're uber powerful because I just am the bestest at making something uber powerful. R Rabbits, I need you to... Oh, they have all of their abilities and perks too! It's like they're geared out in all of the gear I gave them. Oh, if I was doing that, people were right. I should have just taken my weakest little agents and sent 12 of them in there. Rewind to the memory repository. Why would I do that? All agents are dead. No, they're not. I have a Sarah. Can a Sarah do work at all? No, nobody can do work. Uh, Griffin is just panicked. That's okay. I Can you rabbits actually bring this down? That's the question I need to know. How much damage can they do to this thing? It's not affected by pale damage? It's not affected by rabbit damage. What is this thing? So, do you have to take out each of our individual agents in order to make it vulnerable? Possibly? They're all dead. All of the rabbits. Wow. That thing is not messing around. Does it start over now? Is it like I get a freebie? Just a free pass now or what? Let's start this day. What is happening? I know this is supposed to be Project Lore Build, but I have to know. I have to. I'm sorry, I have to know. <laughs> I should have probably read this before I transformed it. I didn't realize that this was going to happen. I, I honestly have no clue what to do with this thing. Let's send Insight in. Wait, Haru can do work with this. This isn't the Plague Doctor anymore. Is it a new free olive? I'll take it. I really will, I don't care. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what exactly is happening here because this is different. This is weird. This is something I haven't seen yet. I've never seen an abnormality that can transform. My God, that's pale damage, and it's so, so strong. It is unbelievably strong. Is Haru even going to survive this? No. Haru didn't survive it. And that's my biggest Baddest. Whoa, it's doing something stupid. 
What's going on with the stupidity here? What you doing? Nothing. Nothing bad. No, I mean, it's bad. That was bad. That was horrible. But it's gonna give me information. And see, I can restart this day again and figure out what I need to do with it. Okay, I picked probably the worst thing I could have done. So let's try attachment, maybe? That's common. They're like low common common instead of very low to common. So attachment is better. Let's restart this day. I'm learning something about this thing. So I do apologize. This I promise this isn't like clickbait. I am totally going to do project lore build stuff. I just have to do this first. I can't not. Now that I've seen what this thing does and I, I swear now I have a free olive that does pale damage. Uh, let me see your or er, yeah, repression. Repression wouldn't be bad either. What about instinct? Absolutely no instinct. <laughs> okay, fine. Managerial guidelines. Once the Quipploff counter reaches zero, this and his disciples shall advent again. Oh my god! It, if it melts down, it does that whole thing where it pops out and creates this massive army of angels? Devils? Whatever it is. I don't think it's an angel. Or maybe it's a fallen angel of some sort. But uh, because I saw 666 written on the sides of that thing. Uh, of like those weird angels that our blessed ones turned into. I think that as long as you manage this the right way, you won't have to worry about that ever happening again. That's actually really awesome. And that gives me another Aleph. So whoever told me, hey, you know, this thing is pretty good. Um, I guess <laughs> they were, but they weren't trolling me. Like they weren't lying. This thing is pretty decent when you figure out what you're doing with it. Boy, is it terrifying. It's absolutely scary, and I hate it. Now is the time to learn something important. So the first thing I want to lead with is the Snow Queen, because everyone's been like, hey, read this one already. And I'm like, okay, I'm working on it. And I know last time people were like, hey, do the Snow Queen. And I don't know how, but I missed that comment when I did the last Project Lore build. I was like reading through. I'm like, okay, what do people kind of want to see? And I missed somebody saying, hey, the Snow Queen. And then I recorded it. And then I saw two other comments were like, hey, do the Snow Queen. So I'm here to read the Snow Queen stuff. A queen lives alone in the frosty winter forest. Like how every story starts, Kai, as a child with a kind heart, when the shards of a mirror made by an evil fairy were scattered on everyone's heart. Kai began to see things he didn't want to see, or need to see. He left the small village he grew up in. In an unforgiving blizzard, Kai met the Snow Queen. He became curious of the world beyond his knowledge. He felt as though everything he knew amounted to so little. The snow palace he reached was so cold, but the Snow Queen's kiss froze his heart, and he couldn't feel the cold anymore. There was no joy in the palace, only the long winter night. Gerda, who was strong enough to remain unpierced by the mirror and brave enough to go on a journey to rescue Kai. So... She set off towards the Snow Palace. The journey was agonizing. Gerda was hurt and pained. Sometimes she cried. However, eventually Gerda met Kai. Spring arrived with blossoming roses. Its warmth melted the Snow Queen's palace. And the pierce of mirror in Kai's heart evaporated without a trace. Then, left all alone, the Snow Queen did something. It was omitted, though, so I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of cool. 
So, before I go on to, like, the rest of this, in our theory, we so we've established we're A. Now, whether we are robot A or regular A, um, whether or not my theory of this is us trying to cope with what happened in the past, whether it be real or not, we either actually, this is like in our mind we compartmentalized, or we actually built stuff to help us physically compartmentalize these feelings, because that was the only way we could like perceive our world. And we were, I guess, so technologically advanced that we could do that. Um, so in order to cope with that, we made things that represent the things going on in our mind. Whichever way that goes, this is still a representation of what's happening in our mind. What's going on to us as A. So, you know, even if this is like Angela putting us into a computer and trying to program the computer to become the A that Angela remembers because something bad happened to A, whatever that is, because Angela seems to be a representation of Carmen. And if Carmen truly cared about us as much as A seems to have cared about Carmen, they probably would have gone through the same process of creating an AI just like A so they could be together forever. So that might also be what's kind of sort of happening. I don't know. Again, the reasons why this is happening, I'm not clear on just yet. But if we frame this in that, this is what happened. The cold heart. You can even represent this as, you know, the snow queen. Uh, the still heart of the, you know, the frozen heart of the snow queen. This could be representative of Carmen or let's say Angela, not Carmen. Carmen was the person. Angela is the AI. This could be Angela. And we could be represented by Kai in this situation. So Angela is kind of the Snow Queen who's sort of kind of helping us. Helping us cope with the harshness of the reality we're in. This winter night in this story. And the pierced, you know, the our pierced heart with the mirror. That's so representative of us piercing our own heart. You know, we look into the mirror, see A, see us, see who we are, and realize that we hate ourselves so much that we can't stand what we're going through. So, what's kind of nice about this story is this is the first little sort of, I guess it's much smaller than this, but it's like a shimmer of light in the darkness. Like barely, barely there. But it, it's kind of representing hope that out of this darkness, there is a Gerda. And there is a Gerda who may actually even be represented or representative of Angela. Maybe this is Angela going through all this pain, trying to help us pull ourselves out of what we did to ourselves. That's kind of sort of the way the story's been been going because Angela says, oh, you know, I hate to see you like this. I hate to see the A I know and love in this much pain and going through all of this all the time. And I'm sick and tired of being the one that has to do this to you. Even though she knows by the end it's going to be beneficial somehow, some way. We will get through this and it will melt that piece of mirror that we keep using to hurt ourselves with um, by reflecting on all of the, the things that we've done. It will melt that away and we will be better for it. So that could be Gerda or the Snow Queen could be. So Angela could be Gerda. Or Angela could be the Snow Queen in this story. I don't know yet. But as we go, I have a feeling we're going to find out. Either Angela's here to save us, or Angela is here to keep us to themselves. Because they're lonely. And if we leave, Angela's going to be all by themselves from this moment forward. So th 
that's kind of sort of where I think this is going with this story. Again, I don't want to jump to any major conclusions until I have most, if not all, of the information. Only because I don't want to mislead people. I try my best not to do that. I do want everyone to know, because um, I have been, I have seen some comments, not a ton of them, but I have seen some comments that are saying like, why are you lying to everyone? This isn't true. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the real thing is. So I want to preface all of this by saying, these are just my theories. I don't know enough about this game and I haven't looked up any of the wiki and like lore outside of what I've experienced in the game. So this is just me speculating about all of this. But I I can't say that every time. So I just want to make sure that I, I'm like I'm clear. I don't know what this is. I don't know what the truth is. This is my my ideas about what's gonna happen. And that's why I, I wanted to talk about that was because I don't want people to think I'm purposely trying to mislead people or, or lie to anyone. And I know, like I said, most of the people understand, hey, this is just me rambling and like trying to piece together everything with limited knowledge. Um, but I know that some people like hop into one of these project lore builds and they're like, hey, like you're going over the lore, but this is just not right. Um, so I just want to make sure that people know that no, I know, I know this isn't right. <laughs> this is probably completely wrong, but I, this is the, as far as I've gotten. This is what I know. Okay, now let's continue with what it has to say here. I remember the day we put her in her cryo coffin with our own hands. At some point, her joyous laughter was gone. She just cycled through laughing and crying. And eventually, she was found in a bathtub, soaked in red, with her wrists cut. We did not believe in death. I will have her reconstructed from the machines. I have detested my entire life, but have become the only answer. She would have been disgusted by me for this. Dying in that bathtub. However, we were too far down the road, filled with remorse and regret, to feel any sort of guilt. One day, it spoke to me. I remember you. You are a kind-hearted person. The moment I heard it, I was seized by the urge to destroy what I had created with my own hands. I didn't want to stop, but oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> this is totally what, like, this is the creation of Angela. So A, in A's mind, the Snow Queen is Angela. Or, no, actually, more or less, this is uh, Carmen. Representation of Carmen up here. So this talks about Carmen, the incident with bloodbath. This talks about how I was completely correct in thinking that Angela was definitely based off of Carmen and A did that because A refused to let Carmen go. All of that is completely accurate. All of it. And it's really kind of cool to see that A kind of felt backed into a corner. I mean, it's not good, but it's neat to see that how the story is kind of sort of playing out. And that a lot of what I was originally thinking was like, correct. Again, I was way off on a lot of things, but it's cool to see that this is what happened. They A lost Carmen. A made Angela to replace Carmen because A refused to let Angela go. A was so narcissistic, let's say. A was such a narcissist that A thought they could manipulate even death itself. I you know, I I refuse to let this person who you know, if this is a horrible situation. The you know, what happened to them was horrible, what they experienced during their life was horrible. All of this was bad. 
Um, and they kind of were just tired of it. And they were hoping to just rest. And instead, and I know, you know, technically the person is gone. The spirit is gone. But it, A would not let that go. So in theory, A thought, well, I'll reach out and I'll grab a hold of this person who I lost and I will bring them back. They are not leaving me. That is, I know they were hurting and I know they had the ability to do that. But in the end, not letting them go, not moving on, not getting past this, only hurt A more. And they know that. They know the second that they heard, I remember you, and you were a kind-hearted person. They, the second that A heard that, A knew that they messed up. But they couldn't do anything. They had gone too far. We know what happened. But I still am very curious as to the why. What, it, what exactly was going on, besides the feelings of guilt and remorse and pain? So... Wow, this is insane. There is so much with this one. You know, when you run across the like one or two abnormalities that kind of really paint a like a big picture, these are huge strokes of paint filling out this painting. Uh it for, you know, my metaphor in my mind for this. It just it makes it just wild to see how just like one tiny paragraph can tell so much of the story. And I might be mistaken, but it seems like most of the very important ones are these smaller ones. The ones that seem kind of, you know, kind of off, kind of different. And Scorch Girl was like the second abnormality based on like the fantasy. This is 0102. So I have to know what this says. It, it might not be important. I don't know. But it seems like some of these smaller ones are the most important to the story. That's why I held on to this one. I wanted to see. It takes the form of a girl burnt to ash. Even though there's nothing left to burn, the fire still doesn't extinguish. A matchstick impales the girl's body like a stake. Usually, the match is always lit, while the abnormality shows no sign of activity. Because of this, employees often speculate that the matchstick may be the abnormality's true body. However, recently, the ashen figure was seen crying, according to witnesses. An excerpt from Abnormality Specialist Dr. Redacted, its research log is as follows. The charred body represents the child's crumbled hope, while the ever-blazing flame represents the obsession for affection. It's always in conflict with the contradiction between these two. We paid a boatload, and that's all they have to say? What? Who said that? That's not the doctor. <laughs> An excerpt from a recorded staff conversation. Well, she's like a ticking time bomb. No one can tell if she's in a good mood or not. We just hope that we won't be the ones blown up before entering the containment unit. You know, she won't get any better. We can only try and keep her from getting worse. The excerpt from counseling logs. I never thought the abnormality would be able to escape. Maybe... We were getting careless, but it seemed that all it could do was burn up the match stuck in its body. Yes, our response was a bit late, I do admit. However, most abnormalities that try to escape would attack the employees in front of them. But this one didn't show any aggression towards the nearby employees, you know. Instead, it headed to a different department. The most crowded place in the company, actually. If we didn't suppress it at the door, half of the people here... Wouldn't be in one piece. <laughs> yeah, because it blows up. I totally understand that. So this one isn't as important. It kind of just sort of explains this abnormality. So maybe I was wrong about this one being like super important. Because it 
seems so simple and one of the first ones. And maybe the numbers don't actually correspond to the first ones they thought of. It might have just been random chance. I don't know. It could also be that the numbers... Like, maybe there's some significance to the numbers. This one definitely gives us a little bit of, like... You know, here's the the hope of a... Here's the, you know, the burnt ash of what, what once was. So their hope was of Carmen who I assume is what is represented by the little girl. The fact that the match is positioned so it's behind the scorched girl kind of is representative of how what little hope remains is stuck behind this massive pile of grief. I, I can totally see that as like a metaphor for this. But otherwise, it kind of just talks about the scorched girl. It, so it's not, it's not like the giant epiphany I was kind of hoping for, kind of like the Snow Queen was. But let's see. So, 37. That one is definitely important. Um, Bloodbath went somewhere. I can never tell anymore with Plague Doctor. There it is. This one is 51. I wonder if anyone... Like, I, I, I'm not going to look it up or anything just yet. But I wonder if anyone has corresponded some of these numbers. And seen if the numbers have anything to do with the importance of the abnormality toward the story. That would be kind of interesting to see. Because there, this game is so well thought out. There is no shot that some of these numbers don't do something. Even if it's, if you find all of the abnormalities and know their numbers, and there's like a spot in the menu that you can plug in a code or something, and it gives you like a secret abnormality, that would be really cool. Even if it's something simple like that. Or even where it's, it like gives you an achievement, where it just pops up like Code Hunter or something like that. That would be neat. I No matter what, if there was something to it, that would be really cool. I And I, I wouldn't put it past this game to do that. But that also means that 04100 seems kind of interesting to me. I know we just got this one, and I know there's quite a few other abnormalities that I could be reading, like Melting Love. And Let me double check something. Is Melting Love a backer one? It is. Okay, that's what I thought. So I'm actually going to... I'm going to hold off on Melting Love. Because there have been some people in the comments saying, hey, just so you know, like the backer ones are important, they're good, they're in the game, but they don't tell you a lot about th what's going on in the story. So I'm going to ignore that one for now. And I'm actually going to look at this tree that we just got. Only because its number is 100. Uh, such a round, even number. There's got to be something going, especially when it's this tiny. What is this? This is definitely something. A tree that stands in the middle of the containment unit. It never withers, even if it is not given any form of nutrition. Some employees take time to rest near this tree. Employees sometimes enter its containment unit for leisure. Pansy says, Hey, Xavier, did you see the new abnormality? I think you got put in charge of it. Xavier says. Yeah, I saw it all right. Just some tree with buds along its branches. I don't think they'll be able to blossom without sunlight, though. Did you start making observations and writing reports yet? Nah, I think I'll get to it, as, as, it soon enough, though. All right, take care. Wait, so we don't know anything about this thing because... They didn't write any reports about it? So, we don't know anything about this tree because Xavier's lazy? I don't blame him. Actually, that might tell us a little bit about this. So maybe it, like, forces people. Like, it, it sucks up their energy. So maybe Xavier's not really a lazy person. Or... This is Abnormality 100, so... Maybe, like, the game devs were running out of stuff, so they did this instead. <laughs> I would... That would be cool. Um, I don't know the story behind all of these, but it would be kind of cool if they did that. 
Um, either way, though, maybe it like sucks up their energy. And because it absorbs their energy, they don't have the strength to do their normal routines and go about their day normally. So that could be what this is suggesting. I don't know. That tree was kind of a letdown. Okay, what that means is, whoa, what? Was it always blossoming? I need to keep an eye on that. I don't want anybody to be captivated and like sucked into the tree. Even though it does heal everybody else. But still, I don't want that to happen. Okay. Since the tree was a big letdown, let's look at this thing. This takes the form of a newborn fetus. Though the appearance is so grossly grotesque, it's hard to even call it a fetus. While communication is possible, it doesn't occur in a normal way. Every word he utters echoes throughout the entire containment unit. This doesn't tell me much about it either. My guess, Plague Doctor had more information. Crap. Now that we've learned quite a bit about all of our abnormalities, let's try to finish this day. So, I see the writing on the wall here. I'm not able to suppress this just yet. I mean, I could by spending a lot of boxes, Dare Frey shoots bullets, pulling out red, sending Nicole in to clear the entire hallways, my clerks are gone. I'm in a pretty good spot to actually get through this ordeal. That's not the issue here. The issue is I completely whiffed on Spa. And I didn't realize their quip off counter was going down every time I did no... Every time I didn't do any work with them for a little while. So I've kind of put Haru in a bad spot, and Haru is about to get lost. So, instead of letting Haru get the got, I think I'm going to end this day here. Move on to the next day. The reason why I'm not going to just retry this day, even though we've lost... Susan, who's brand new. Ramirez, who is brand new. Um, oh, wow. We've only lost two. Okay, that's why I'm not going to retry this day. I need to move forward. I need to get stronger egos. I need to do more work with some of these mysterious ones. And I, I only lost the equivalent of one lobotomy... Well, two lobotomy points. And I'm going to have minus one for the bird. That's it. So it's just minus three lobotomy points for this day. Otherwise, this was a pretty successful day all in all. I just know I'm not strong enough for this yet. I'll take a B. Not all that bad. I keep calling you A, but I think you and A might have become separate entities now. From the moment you began to have new memories, you both started to walk different paths. I must wonder... How the memory separated you from A. Well, even if you two have differences, it is still important for you to witness this place through A's eyes. Why do we repeat this eternal cycle? Enduring endless suffering? What's at the end of the line? What kind of world was it that he saw? The answers to these questions are what you must know. However, the choices you make are up to you not him. As a consequence of those choices, you may lose it all, or you may gain everything. I'm not trying to control you. I just try to support you. That is my role here. Plus, I have seen many other exes who made it this far and witnessed the innumerable amount of efforts and failures they made. Oh... So we're not A. I mean, we're A, but we're not A. I think we are a robot. Or an AI of some sort. Who's being programmed to be A. Like the new A. With all of the memories and all of the experiences A had. Now you are here, scrabbling over it all and climbing up. Of course, I have kept all their data in my head but it is not my place to share it with you. A machine has its own work to do. That's what you, or A, once said to me. 
This is the person I was talking about before. It's Binna. I don't know about Binna, but I like Binna. I love the outfit. I love everything about this aesthetic. You've returned. So, did you have fun with your little journey while I was locked up here? Don't worry, I'm not mad with you. Oh, Sorrow, you see. Finally, I have come to respect you. For I know you will never depart me. It's difficult to perceive the flow of time here anyway. So... This eternity has sort of saved me. Have you seen the turbid streams of the enormous river that cross the whole city? If you arrive downstairs after the raging rapids and a serpentine current, you will see a meadow that is enormously broad, but also tranquil. That land is bathed with all kinds of mud, sand, trash, and the residuals that have come from the upstream. What isn't caught by the upstream, or midstream really, finally ends up here, downstream. To bear all the residuals that pile up, one would need a strong back that doesn't break easily. You know, this is a metaphor, right? There's no real, like, water right here. Except for that weird waterfall in the back. I have faced many wells here. I have to draw water every single day. But it seems that the water level never really lowers. <laughs> what is a well? Uh, I don't think so. What does it mean to draw water? Let's ask that. Our labor is bringing up the water that is deep within the well to the outside. Wait, are you talking about actual water? Do we... Is this not a waterfall, but a water up? Is that what this is? A water rise? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Maybe this isn't a metaphor. Maybe there's actual water. You never know what the bucket contains when it rises from the eternal darkness. But I always draw the water with a pulley, come what may. You must always stay cautious so that you don't fall into the well. Maybe it was an act of generosity towards those that are thirsty so that they may state themselves. It was you who made the bucket after all. But you left the duty of drawing the water with the bucket to another. Hey, don't ask for my name, okay? Uh, it's Binna. <laughs> I know it. Uh, Binna isn't the name of a person. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Don't ask for your real name. I got it. We'll get there. Your suppre I can already tell your suppression is going to be a nightmare, but we'll get there. It's a sad name of the place where one finds many graves. I'm the one who draws the water, after all. Why would you come here? What do you wish for me to draw? Extract five or more ego of great he or higher. What does extracting mean? Do I buy them? I don't know. Oh, we're on day 37. I can core suppress too. Oh no. The core suppression might actually help me with this midnight ordeal too. What do I get for it? I don't know, but I'll find out in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching this one. And remember to take care and goodbye.